It's a beautiful day today and we're reading about some more Karens. We're actually on the I don't work here ladies subreddit because I was thinking that has to be a good subreddit to find Karens. So yeah, I've been searching Karen on I don't work here lady and there's a lot we're going to read today. As always, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know down below in the comment section. And with that being said, enjoy guys. A tactical Karening. The Karen gets Karened. I was witness to possibly the most hilarious Karen interaction I've ever seen. In this, I was just an onlooker and and I didn't play a part at all. There are three players in this dialogue. K, the Karen. UC, the nicely dressed but unfortunate customer who Karen decided worked there. And HC, the hilarious customer who, well, it's all become clear. Saturday, yesterday in fact. I went to pick up some groceries at Asda, a British company owned by Walmart. Edit until February, but less trashy. As I'm shopping with my trolley, I hear the harumph of an approaching Karen behind me. But to my surprise, she walked straight past me to UC, demanding this, that and the other, to which UC response. Sorry, but I don't work here. As Karen starts accusing him of lying, I figured that I'll stick around and see what happens. It might be funny, but if she assaults the guy or accuses him of something, I'll be a witness. As I'm listening to UC reiterate that he doesn't work for Asta, and Karen repeatedly accuse him of lying, another customer, HC, comes past and addresses the Karen in a big booming voice. Finally, a manager, he booms at her. Some woman just accused me of not helping her when I'm a customer here. Now, what are you going to do about it? Oh, the irony. Karen turns to HC and says, what? I'm not a manager. What do you? But gets cut off mid-sentence by HC. Of course you're a manager. I've seen you talking to customers. Now you're going to help me. Karen tries to explain that she was talking to UC, who she says works there. But in the confusion, UC had wisely ducked out, leaving Karen saying, I was talking to... As she gestures to an empty space, suddenly she's alone. HC, well, hanging around speaking to staff isn't very professional, is it? You should be doing your job helping customers, starting with me. Karen then just screams, I don't freaking work here, F off, and walks off, clearly upset, abandoning her shopping trolley, that's a shopping cart to those who live in the States, in the process, you see who's been waiting on the next aisle walks back at this point, and says, ah, she's gone, yeah well, says HC, that got rid of her, smiles vaguely and just continues shopping like nothing happened, HC, whoever you are, you're a legend, that's so funny, you would have been so happy that you stopped to listen to this OP, like oh my god, I could have missed this unbelievably beautiful interaction, that's so awesome. The next one is called I shut down a Karen by being super loud. I'm on mobile, yada yada, you know the drill. I left retail a few years ago and I noticed a dramatic improvement in my physical and my mental health, largely due to the reduced contact with the listless cattle that you see in the stores. However, it seems that the customer service vibe never completely washes off because I was recently accosted in a liquor store by a woman with a jean jacket and the all too familiar haircut that we all know and hate. The particular store in question is part of a chain setup, like a smaller Sam's Club but the only thing they sell are booze and cigars. Great place to blow a paycheck. I got to leave work a little early due to working some extra hours at the beginning of the week and I was completely fried. The plan was to grab a craft beer that I'd never tried and maybe some slightly pricier bourbon and just chill. My work's dress code was flexibly business casual so I was wearing dress shoes, slacks and a dark polo which is regrettably similar to the store's uniform. Only some of the associates wore aprons and all of them had the store name embroidered on the polos. I was knelt down near the end of the beer aisle. When I overhear a woman talking to her boyfriend one row over. They're trying to find a nitro stout and they aren't seeing it because the old they're in sorts by local beer and the one they want is from out of state. Conveniently about two shelves over from me. I speak up and I wander around the corner to let them know where I saw it and they thank me and they ask if I've had it before. We chat briefly about one or two others that we've had that are pretty similar but not as good and then I get back to my browsing and then I feel a tap on my shoulder. Karen, excuse me, me, sorry am I in your way? Karen, no but can you help me find where the brand of whiskey I'd never heard of is. Me. Ah, uh, what kind of liquor is that? Karen. I think it's a whiskey. Okay, do you know if it's a bourbon or an Irish whiskey or Karen pulling a mock sad face? I don't, sorry. Me. Well, the whiskey's the three aisles that way with the bourbons on the left-hand side and everything else on the right-hand side. Unless it's scotch, which is over here. Karen. Aren't you gonna take me there? Me. Sorry, I've got to pick up my own stuff and then get home. There should be somebody around here who knows the selection a bit better. Karen. I can't believe you won't help me. That's a really rude. Me. Lady, I don't work here. I just drink a lot. Karen, I want to talk to your manager. Oh my god, why do they never listen? At this point, I was yet unseasoned to the ways of the mid-50s entitled boomer trash. So I shook my head and I turned around to keep looking for my own stuff. I hear a soft, scorned little gasp behind me and I feel the nails digging into my shoulder. Preface, I'm not a well-adjusted individual. I have a family history of untreated conditions and I was lucky to get out of primary and secondary school with PTSD and all of my teeth. My bodily autonomy and personal space 
those are very important to me. And while I am patient and understanding in almost every other regard, this is one issue that you don't push with me. The split second between feeling her dig in and realizing what's going on. My brain's RPMs have buried the needle and I'm half a restrained impulse from biting off her manicured princess fingers and gouging out her eyes. I opt instead to take a lesson from our primate cousins in Dragon Ball Z. When crap gets bad, yell to assert your power. Me with a raw so loud it left me hoarse for like two days. Get your hands off me. The store goes dead quiet. I grab her hand, wrench it off me and shuffle her away with both hands. She stumbles and bumps into a shelf but doesn't fall over. She's looking at me the way that a cow looks at an oncoming train. Eyes saucer wide in disbelief and incredulity. The fear not quite managing to take hold yet. She opens her mouth to say something that was probably how dare you or something similar. But I'm already frothing at the mouth. Every D&D barbarian player has a rage boner for what my face looks like right now. Me still screaming and stumbling over my words a bit. Never freaking touch me ever. I'll rip your cheap ass in half. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Every time it looks like she's going to interject, I cut her off with another leave me alone. By now management and one other associate are booking it over to defuse what they're sure is going to be imminent violence. And by all appearances, they're right. My face is red, my body's shaking. And while I'm not that big of a dude, I'm poised for a fight against a comparatively small woman. Manager, so you need to calm down. Me, I am calm. She needs to keep her hands to herself. Karen, he assaulted me. Call the police. Me, not as loud. Voice cracking. Go ahead, lady. I'll wait. You started this. Associate, so you need to come with me. Me, I'm buying my beer and I'm leaving. Check your security tape. She came after me first. Karen to the manager. I want him fired. <laughs> they still think you work there. I told you I don't work here. What the hell's wrong with you? Manager, sir, I told you to calm down. Me, look at this. I pull my shirt collar over and I show them where her nails dug in. There's no blood, but it's pretty obvious the marks are fresh and that I didn't do it to myself. Me, you want to get the cops involved? Fine, pull the damn tapes and we'll talk about pressing charges. It seems to have dawned on Karen that she might have messed up. She hasn't said anything. There's a crowd watching us at this point. I see at least one cell phone recording. I turn to a random person standing nearby. Did you see what happened? Young guy. Not all of it, but I saw her holding you and you pushed her away. Me voice cracking like a teenager. Thank you. At this point, I grab the six pack I was looking at and I start to leave. Manager. So you need to... Me. I'm leaving. You want to call the cops? I'll wait for you to check the security tapes, but then I'm pressing charges. I walk towards the tills and I set my beer on the counter. The attendant at the desk was looking over my shoulder at the manager, but he must have given her the okay because she scans me out and I leave with my beer. I made it about halfway home before I had to pull over and weep. The adrenaline crash hit me super hard and I ugly cried for like five minutes until I could get enough composure to drive. I didn't go back to that store for a few months. Either they don't remember or it was settled after I left. The moral of the story, embrace your inner howler monkey. Don't give them a chance to think or wind up their usual indignant tirade. Wow, that was so wild. And they still thought you were an employee. That's so unbelievable. And like this comment says, the best way to deal with crazy is to out crazy. Well done. Yeah, how awful. Even if you did work there, imagine thinking you can treat an employee like this. Oh, some people are so bad. Sorry you had to deal with this OP. The next one is called Karen versus Retail Veteran. Somebody in my friend group keyed me in on this lovely subreddit after they had a good laugh at some of my stories. Over the years, I've grown to loathe people who treat retail employees like garbage, and I go out of my way to make a fool of them, so I'll share one story now. I worked for years in retail before switching careers. I went from dealing with people who asked for items based entirely on what the people in said items commercial were wearing, to teaching children. And this is one story that makes me think the children are by far the smarter breed. For a while, I worked as a trainer for a very popular cell phone company. I would often visit carriers and do events for customers and train employees on relevant new features and items. So I was almost always dressed very well. The most dressed down I ever got was a polo, dress pants and dress shoes because I wanted to give a good and professional impression. However, my style of dress came with the greatest Karen bait known to man, a silver name tag. Beyond the hundreds of times I was mistaken for an employee while at the stores, this story takes place when I went grocery shopping after work one evening. That should be enough background, so on with the story. I finished up later than usual and I was browsing the groceries for the next couple of days at a semi-supermarket whose logo is a bullseye. I had a cart with several frozen items that my wife loves, some snacks for my son, some dog food for my dog and various other small things to carry me through. I was browsing some spices, debating on if I had enough of a few kinds to make chili. When I hear a faint noise behind me, I squeeze in a bit closer, trying to make sure that I'm not blocking the aisle. No sense in being rude, right? A second or two go by and my spider sense begins to tingle. And then, dear reader, I hear the dreaded sound that in the retail world is both terrifying and amusing, depending on how far away you're standing. Excuse me? Ah, yes, the mating call of the wild Karen. I turn around to see a specimen of at least 40, trying desperately to be mistaken for her own daughter in what I 
can only assume was a pair of yoga pants, furry boots, a shirt that was strategically unbuttoned, and a huge pair of sunglasses acting as a solar panel for her let me speak to your manager haircut. My desperate plea for clemency in the form of her own ability to notice a mistake came immediately as I pushed my cart further away and I swept my arm where I was standing. Sorry, didn't know I was blocking you, but alas this story would not have made it here if that was all she needed to do. No, Karen did not want to graze the spice rack. She had used her cosmic powers on me without me realising. Because now I was no longer shopping for dinner, I had been granted employment, and Karen was not pleased at my performance so far. No, I need you to help me find some food item I don't want to malign by naming. I'm a smart ass by nature, you can tell, and my wife often jokes that I'm paid well to tell people where they can stick it and make them happy to hear it, but these skills are lost on the wild Karen. So is the fact that the store uniform is khaki pants and a red shirt, while I'm in a blue and white dress shirt, dress pants and wearing a company logo jacket that doesn't remotely look like I'm an employee, I decide to assume that she's perhaps dazzled in bright lights without her solar panel glasses, guarding her beady eyes, so I smile and politely say, I'm sorry I don't work here, her eyes narrow, now looking like the shining black of a shark, and the games have now begun, you're wearing a uniform, don't give me that crap, you can put up that garbage when you're done doing your job, my eyebrow rises and in my head I hear the ringside bell, okay Karen, game on, so in my best I really don't hope you're run over by a stray water buffalo voice and smile, I say, what was it you needed help finding ma'am, I said ma'am and she didn't like it, don't show weakness now we've only started, but in the same condescending tone she wails, I need so and so item, now show me to it, I nod and I push my buggy along as I head to the back of the store, she doesn't look pleased that I'm bringing the buggy, but if she says anything she does so under her breath, and I know soon enough she'll have plenty to complain about, so I say for the moment where the only sound is the slap slap of her boots ricocheting off the floor and on the heels of her feet, I walk several aisles, after a dozen she starts to huff and puff and I can hear the faintest grumbling about why it was so hidden away, and why did she have to walk so far, not directed at me but I'm not deaf so I can hear her childish tantrums, thank god she can't see the evil smile on my face, passing the last row of groceries I hang a left, passing seasonal candies, luggage, travel etc, she's behind me in such a blurry huff of muttering anger, I don't know if she's questioning the marital status of my parents, the life choices that brought her here or both, but she's not happy and it sounds more and more like a car that won't start, and less like a person talking to themselves. As we reach the book section, I wheel the cart over and I start down an aisle. Now the Karen is really angry. Where the hell are you going? I'm looking for this item. If you're too stupid to find it, then maybe I should be talking to your manager. This is drawing a crowd from the nearby electronics section. My plan is working out better than I'd hoped. I stop in front of the small children's section and I grab a thin copy of what's basically a toddler's first spelling book, a few letters playing with a small child on the cover, and a title about learning the first few letters of the alphabet. Perfect. Walking back to the red-faced Karen, I offer the book. I don't say anything, I just extend my arm showing her the cover. Like most people would, she takes the offered book, looks at it, looks at me, and then basically growls, what the hell is this? Are you freaking stupid? Where's your manager? You're absolutely awful. Her wailing has attracted at least two employees who seem to recognize the whiny wails of the retail native Karen. One is on a small radio, calling who I assume is the manager, while another is coming our way with terror in their eyes, that only an entitled middle-aged woman with an attitude problem can cause. With a smile, I gesture to the book in her hands, and I say in the absolute best customer service voice, actually ma'am, I thought since you can't tell the difference between a customer and an employee, you must not be able to read. So I figure this book can help. Stunned, silence, the poor hamster responsible for the complex operation of powering the Karen was working overtime, so when the employee finally makes it to us, they're unaware of what I said, only that I was smiling in a customer service kind of way. Karen was still all mouth agape at what I said. When they tried a polite greeting, hello, is there something I can help you with? Karen was livid. She proceeded to throw the book at me, literally and figuratively, and start screaming. I dodged the book as her house of rage wound up. How dare you talk to me that way? I want this man's manager right now. He needs to be fired. Oh my god, they still think you work there. Oh no, she still didn't get the point. Maybe I should have started with an easier book. Dr. Seuss? Maybe something on tape? She hasn't slowed down, is cussing like a rabid honey badger high on PCP, and somewhere in that string of expletives were words that vaguely made a caveman type sense, mainly short phrases. The employee is trying desperately to put out the fire that is Karen. Her face is so red that I swear smoke is coming out of that horrible dye job. And the distant employee on the walkie is obviously begging for a manager or a priest. I step back away from any flailing pieces and just wait politely, taking a second to text my wife that I was held up and to expect a good story when I got home. Her response, because she knows me. What did you do now? I love that woman. When the manager comes, they must have been out of priests. The woman is pulled to the side and he speaks to her, trying to calm her down. The employee standing near me 
me, looks at me, and with a bewildered look asks me, what happened? Not wanting to spoil the punchline, I just kind of made a face and softly said, didn't the haircut clue you in? Big mistake. The employee chirps with laughter, he quickly chokes off. I don't think he expected me to know the dorsal plumage of the wild Karen, but Karen has heard the sound and went from slowly lowering to a shrill string of complaining, back to seething anger. Once again, she was all but frothing at the mouth. After another few minutes, the manager gets her to step aside and comes over to talk to me. He begins asking all sorts of questions that she obviously decided to embellish. Why did you call her something that I actually didn't say? Did you throw a book at her? Were you following her? Things like that. Things that could only be claimed with the loosest concept of reality. So, in a pleasant voice, I explained how I was shopping and she demanded that I show her where an item was and refused to accept that I didn't work here. This caused the manager to frown as he looked at me. He saw how I was dressed and I think some light in his eyes actually died, probably realizing he had to actually think worse of humanity than just five minutes ago. And it took another piece of his soul with it. I've been there. So I smile and nod as I see him reason out that I was basically kidnapped to find something for this woman. And all the tumblers in his mind seemed to fall into place. He must have seen this type of thing often enough to know what happened or close enough. But I nod and say, since she can't read and might be colorblind, I got her a book on the alphabet instead. I figure if she knew how to read it, it'd fix all of her problems. She threw the book at me, cussed like a sailor and wants you to fire me. Maybe I should have got something in crayon. The employee standing nearby is done for. He begins to laugh hysterically, full on belly laughs that send him retreating for a door to their back room nearby. Even as he fades from sight, I can still hear the echoes of his laughter. The manager, a seasoned veteran of the retail war it seems, manages to make his initial chuckle sound like a disapproving grumble at the retreating employee. But the way his face scrunched up, I know full well he found it at least reasonably funny. Karen is mad that the employee is laughing, having at least the sense to know that she's the butt of the joke, even if she didn't hear said joke. So score one for her situational awareness. So she comes over to us while the manager's poor soul begins to wither inside him. She's in full-on complain mode. Corporate this, I know so-and-so person that. It all sounds like the teacher from Peanuts if you've been in actual retail before. Turning with an admirably straight face, the manager holds up a hand and silences her through his weird Karen charming powers. Ma'am, again her eye twitches. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop harassing other shoppers and keep the volume down. A vein in her forehead begins to leap from the skin and do a little dance as she wins herself up for another tirade. He was the one harassing me. She almost reaches around him, jabbing her 2 99 press-ons at me like the predatory talons she wishes they were. The manager, not happy with basically having her almost try to wrap herself around him to get to me, holds up his hands in a very firm voice and says, Ma'am, you need to calm down. If you can't, then I'll have to ask you to leave. The blubbering incoherent Karenisms that follow don't translate well to text, and if I had thought I could get away with it, I would have recorded it with my phone. As it was, she protested, swore, threatened, and actually raked her arm down a shelf in a tantrum, knocking down almost everything as she screamed at the manager, and that's when I knew what was coming. She wasn't going to be asked to leave. Oh no, at this point she was about to become a captive audience. The manager called for somebody in the clothing department and overwalked two women, who, God bless them, wrangled the woman and began to escort her out the front. The employee who'd walked away laughing came over and escorted me back to grocery and told me that she was going to be detained and barred from the store. He was in a good mood, except maybe having to clean up her tantrum, and we joked about the vast level of stupid that we've been graced to see. A few minutes later, I checked out and was walking to the door when two police officers walked in. Rather annoyed looking, I left with a smile on my face. Moral of the story? Never inflict yourself on random people and assume they have to put up with your BS. You never know when you'll meet the crocodile hunter of Karen's. Yeah, like the other post. Don't bloody treat people like this. Oh my god. That was so fun to read. I got so immersed into that story. And yeah, good job OP. I feel like we should read one more. Karen tries to get me fired and then says she married my gay cousin. For a little backstory, I'm in my junior year, grade 11, and I'm taking an education course, which basically teaches you how to be a teacher. We have to have field experience or practical work. We get sent to a school and put into a classroom to help the teacher. It's a great way to see if teaching is right for you. Well, the classroom I'm currently stationed at is a pretty good one. I know the teacher pretty well because she was my teacher and my brother's teacher when we were younger. This means she trusts me to do a lot more than other teachers probably would. Her class were having a back to school party and the teacher asked if I'd mind getting some sodas the night before and she'd pay me back for them. The reason she asked is because she forgot them. She's old, it happens. Of course, I agree. I go to our local store and I grab these 12 pack of sodas. There are only 24 students in the class, but I wasn't sure what they liked. Plus the teachers could have what was left over. I decided to also get a few small gifts like candy or small toys as they were cheap. By the time I finished, my cart was pretty full, but I was obviously shopping and not working. As I'm walking to the till, I decide to go ahead and grab some cheap things for me to have for dinner. I stop my cart and I start reaching up on the shelf to grab things. While I'm turned around, a woman starts digging around my cart. I quickly stop her and I ask her, what are you doing? She says, well, 
aren't you stocking shelves? I'm just taking some of the candy. Well, okay. Now, to be fair, I was still wearing my school uniform, which is pretty similar to the stores. Both are khaki pants and blue polos, but the store shirts have the store's name on the back. I decide to give her the benefit of the doubt and I just say, no, I'm shopping. I need this candy for school. Please put it back. She starts getting all huffy and says, you're wearing the uniform? Stop lying or I'll have you fired. My husband is the manager. Now I know she's lying. I know because my cousin is the manager. My cousin is married, but definitely not to her. He's gay. I say, I know that isn't true. Just give me my candy. I take it back from her and I head to the till. As I'm checking out, I see her complaining to none other than my cousin. I pay and I decide to let her know she was full of crap. I go and give my cousin a big hug and I ask him how his husband was doing. Her face went red and she hurried off. Wow. <laughs> That's so funny. Hell yeah, OP. That's so awesome. That was so fun to read. It's so awful that people can be like this, but you handled it so well, OP. And on that note, let's read something wholesome. YouTube videos. Me watching videos on how to braid hair just in case my daughter ever asked me to do it. Me today when my daughter asked me to braid her hair. Oh, that's so cute. Congratulations. That's beautiful. And you were prepared. That's so sweet. When he tells you you're the best, but it's actually him who's the best. You put your glasses back on and you face the facts. I'm not the best. You are okay. Accept it. How my chubby boyfriend feared I'd act when he took his shirt off. How I actually am when he takes anything off. Oh, that's so lovely. Hell yeah. That's so sweet and a beautiful place to end the episode. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Viscera Steel Reviews. Human equivalent of a dry ham sandwich. Definitely saving that one for later. Yeah, how funny. We learned so many funny sayings in these episodes. And yeah, that was definitely one of them. Thank you for all the support, everybody. Let me know down below if you enjoyed today's episode. And as always, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!